Roadrunner Express. With mild Looney Tunes theming, two left tails, and a great setting against the quarry wall, this coaster does a lot of things right as a family coaster. But just how good does that make it as a coaster? Find out in this review. Beep beep. As Texas has the first ever Aero Mine Train coaster in Runaway Mine Train at Six Flags Over Texas, it also has the last ever built in Roadrunner Express. Two Aero Mine Train coasters opened after this ride in Big Bad John at Magic Springs and Canyon Blaster at Six Flags Great Escape, but both of those were relocations of previously built coasters. Compared to earlier models, Roadrunner Express has a bit more to it with larger drops and more forces. The queue line has mild Roadrunner theming, and there are still a few points along the track where you can see where theming used to be. The fact that Six Flags hasn't updated this theming as it has deteriorated is kind of sad, as it would go a long way to elevating this attraction. With good theming for Poltergeist now and Dr. Diabolical, I do hope that Fiesta Texas takes the time to invest in renovating this theming soon, as I miss the boulder and the other coyote things along the course. Seat placement shouldn't matter much on this ride, as the trains are long and there's not a huge difference between the front and the back, though I prefer trying to get either of those if they're available. On slow days, you can pick your seat, whereas on busier days, a grouper will help to make sure that the trains go out full. The simple lap bar can be pushed down a bit tight, so just be aware of that, of that in case that bothers you. Though, there's little to no airtime to be had on this coaster to begin with, so it really shouldn't make a difference one way or another. After leaving the station, you climb up the lift hill which has a shallow hill at the top to allow most of the car to get off of it before going down the largest of the drops. As a kid who was dragged onto this coaster, this drop was big enough that I didn't like this coaster, as I could feel that drop. Similar to my dislike of, at the time, Bugs Bunny's Whitewater Rapids. As an adult, this drop is rather tame compared to most bigger coasters, and it's just a solid drawn out drop for a family coaster. Don't be fooled by thinking this is a calm turning drop though, by the overall design of the coaster. The first drop is mainly straight down, it's just not very steep until it hits the bottom and turns under Iron Rattler. Where this coaster does punch above average though, is in the positive G department as the valleys throughout this coaster put a large amount of force on you. Riding a couple of times shouldn't be a problem, but I've had to tap out from multiple rerides of this coaster if other coasters have gotten me dizzy or beaten me up. I'm looking at you, Boomerang. Largely, these forces add character, but there's something to keep in mind if you're overly sensitive or strongly dislike the feeling of being pressed down in your seat. After the first turnaround, you go over a small hill that barely offers any airtime, if any at all, before going through a second helix, which is mainly banked upwards around a rock theming structure. Despite its modest appearance, this helix offers similar forces to the first turn. After this, you go up a second lift hill, which is a lovely break on any coaster, especially a family one. You keep your speed most of the way up the lift hill, so it really isn't even slowed until the top car gets to the top. At the top, there's a real lack of theming. Before heading down into another turning drop helix, which offers strong and sustained positive Gs. This drop also has the on-ride photo section on it, if that's important for you to know. Then another rather mild airtime hill that does little before another mild drop in a forceful upward helix that runs into a shed in the final brake run. Overall, how good is Roadrunner Express? With a large amount of people riding on each train, I feel you can really appreciate the community aspect of riding this coaster, as I've seen many different ages of adults laughing and or feeling slightly winded while on that final brake run of this coaster. As a family coaster, 
This offers strong enough thrills to appease most riders, while still being mild enough to be approachable to some, though not all, little kids. Its 42 inch height requirement is much appreciated in this park, though as it's the only coaster that younger guests can ride alone outside of the DC Universe's two kiddie coasters. I rank this as one of my favorite family coasters. Not anywhere near ZDT Switchback, which is amazing, but near the top of the pack of similar family style coasters. I rank it right above the newly neutered Riddler's Mindbender at Six Flags Over Georgia, as sadly, that has lost most of its magic when it comes to airtime and is now just a solid family coaster. And I rank it right below Batman the Ride at Six Flags Fiesta Texas, as the free flipping gimmick just edges out this solid family coaster, as I prefer the flipping and rocking to those strong positive G's that Roadrunner Express has to offer. Roadrunner Express is a solid family coaster, but at least for me, doesn't have that extra special touch other than executing its elements well and having a great setting. What are your favorite family coasters? Would you like to see more theming on this coaster? Let me know. And as always, cup can crop. Beep beep. <laughs>